Uh, I'm a student at South Texas Beta, which is right across the street. And uh, I'm a business student there. And we focus on a lot of things uh, in the business world. One major thing is entrepreneurship. And that's something that's really focused on. It's something that I've grown to love and enjoy. Uh, to see the startup of a small business pop up on the corner of a street in McAllen, Edinburgh, or Mission. And it's something that I've taken time to research, think about, and actually come up with some ideas that could help the Rio Grande Valley achieve potential that it could have, and um, a potential that it can have in the future. Now, we all were raised with different cultures and uh, different beliefs and different norm, standards and norms that we're used to. Uh, I just want to show of hands how many people in the room uh, have Latino background, One. European background, Cajun background. Okay, so we are. The RGB is a great mix. We can already see a great mix of cultures and ideals. And that's something that the RGB has, every town has, but the RGB is the diamond in the rough of all these cultures coming together to form one culture. And that's something that the RGB has that no other place has. We have our own culture. You know, even though some people might think that are the language of, that we share with our culture, the dialect that we have with Spanish, uh, people saying carpeta or troca, that's something that's really bad, but that's something that I think is the, what makes RGB different. And there are a lot of things that make the RGB different. I mean, we see everywhere, we see the, the, the bringing together of cultures, we see tacanillas, we see uh, <coughs> beer gardens, guest houses, uh, Thai restaurants, Japanese sushi places, and uh, panaderias, like, and the famous De Alba Bakery, and Snow Bike Vietnamese restaurant. All of these restaurants were startup restaurants that started from nowhere and started from a kitchen. And I think that's something that uh, people uh, need to draw on to understand the story. And the story of every restaurant is different. And that's something that I enjoy is understanding the story. And that's also a, a problem that we encounter every day. People don't understand culture or other people's culture. And uh, that's how stigma stereotypes begin to create and form. And those stereotypes build a wall, build a wall between the cultures. And I'm behind this table because I once had a wall of culture between me and the Latino culture and the Mexican culture. But as I grew up, I was exposed to these cultures through my friends and talking to them about it and actually going to Takarias and you know growing up with mariachis at every party even though my whole family is German. Uh, the notion of getting to know that, understanding it. We don't have to agree with everybody's culture. That's fine. But if we can understand where somebody is coming from, we can then understand what business decisions that they make and uh, why they make those decisions. And that's something uh, that is key to bringing the RGB to life, is bringing together all those businesses, all those business norms and culture of the valley, all the little unique things, and creating a mold of all these businesses all of these people to come together, create new startups, have new ideas, and new ideas to be put together to form 
one culture that not everybody notices, but it's there and can grow. And as a culture grows, a uh, culture will expand into different areas and create a notable culture that everyone will know. And uh, that's one thing that is really important, is to make sure that that culture that we have here in the Rio Grande Valley is noticed. And by creating businesses that make an impact, not only in our personal lives, but the personal lives of others who are less fortunate. And I'm not talking about the people that choose not to do anything just because they, they can't do anything, but the people that truly have nothing and to be able to give back. That's one thing that the Rio Grande Valley has that no other big city or big area has. This is the hidden gem of charity, the hidden gem of people caring, and that's another thing that helps our culture grow. There are many other things that help our culture grow, our flora, our fauna, uh, bike trails, and these are all things that are part of our infrastructure and that uh, make us a spotlight, and will make us a spotlight in the nation and in the world, so that one day you can go to Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, and say, I'm a Valley, I'm from the Rio Grande Valley. And they know what you're talking about. They're not thinking, is that San Antonio, South Texas? Is that Houston? <laughs> right? Um, and that's the key, is to be able to break down that wall of stereotypes understand the culture, and be able to build businesses off that one culture, the Valley Valley culture, Rio Grande Valley culture. Thank you. Any questions? Um, actually, uh, what you just said about South, South Texas that has happened to me before when, when you travel and go to conferences, uh, you go and meet people, right? And the first thing they ask, well, where are you from? Oh, well, I'm from the valley, the Rio Grande Valley. And, oh, where is that? Okay, South Texas, San Antonio. No, no. So uh, probably that's one of our challenges that we have as a community. And I, I, I'm still thinking, when are we going to get there? But I'm really confident that we will get there, but in the, probably in the next decade. I believe now with the medical school, it's going to be a game changer. But and, and that's why we started Tech Tuesday with, with our movie, because we wanted to concentrate people that really want to do something about it, starting businesses, promote entrepreneurship, and stuff like that. So I really like what, what you just said, and thank you for sharing. And another thing that uh, I wanted to mention is that also we need to start, we have, there are a lot of programs. One program that I'm a part of that helped me to see that was the International Baccalaureate Program. And through a course who called, uh, that's called Theory of Knowledge, helps us understand different cultures and sets the bar for what kind of person we are when we exit the program. And that's something that I think needs to be implemented into education all around the nation to be able to improve the quality of the people. Yes? You are the kind of young man that uh a lot of people down here in leadership positions are looking for Thank to you. carry this forward. There are a couple organizations working exactly on what you're talking about, getting a region, not so that uh, RGB is a place people know and they don't think San Antonio. Uh, you should know about the South, uh, about the Texas Border Coalition, made up of um, mayors, leaders, uh, clear across the valley. You should also know about the Bi-National Economic Development Council, which also is working to do just exactly the kinds of things you're talking about. And uh, I would be happy to tell you a little bit more about them uh, afterwards. Uh, you should know about them. I think you would be very um, interested that there are people thinking the way you are. There are people who are wanting that. RGB identification, a regionalism. Thank you. So I'm very glad
talk. Hear what you're saying. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, I, I have a tough question. I, I ask this question a lot to a lot of the people that I meet, actually. Uh, you know, I, I started this event with, you know, Jorge, with Dr. Sargent, and I also, I also asked him the same question, which is, um, is, is the valley content? Is, is the valley, like, do you, do you, should we care about those people that are just happy with what they have? Or do we need to focus on those people like us that don't want to change it? Because you made a point about implementing theory of knowledge throughout all education. That's saying that you are not satisfied with people's education. You're saying that that their concept, their their thought pattern is is lacking, right? And that's what I believe in as well, but I also have the difficulty of is everybody edu like can everybody be changed? Or or are they just born a certain way or are they just happy a certain way? You know what I mean? Like, is ambition something that you teach, or is ambition something that is born with, with the person? Um, that is a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that ambition is something that is taught to you, and ambition is something that it's a choice. Uh, people always have the choice. You've been taught it, and people have the choice to go and be ambitious people. And I think that the problems that we have with education and the way we teach things, if they're implemented in at an earlier age, that when they're still creating these ideals and putting up these, or right now putting up these walls and stereotypes of other cultures, if we teach that early enough on, the development of understanding other cultures will uh, be greater, and other, more people will understand that. But it will take time, as you said. It takes time to be able to implement that into policy, to be able to make that uh, a requirement. This, and this is my, my next comment. It's more like an open comment, and okay. not directly question to you, but to everybody. Um, I had had the experience uh, there in the middle school and in elementary school, there was this one parent. She had four kids, three different parents, three different dads, and she was basically just getting money for having the child and the child support from the other, from the, from the dads. So that's a very, um, that's a stigma of a Latino community, just taking advantage of the system and then I went to Websaco to another event, and then I, I met this student, he was like, oh, I wanna learn to how to weld so I can go work in the fields with my dad. He was 13 years old. He just wanted to learn how to weld to go work with, their, with, with his dad. What, what experience do these people have to live to change their mentality and grow an ambition I believe that uh, that's because his, his dad is his role model. So I believe that he needs, there's nothing wrong to, to have that because it's, at the end it's a job, right? But what about if that child, right, 13 years old, they have different role models, right? Like now that we're gonna have uh, 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 the, the company from Bo Bo Boca Chica, uh, now it's, it's, it's six. I believe that's also gonna be a game changer for the area because now that child will think, oh, I also can be an astronaut or I can be an engineer, you know? So slowly we can start changing that. Uh, but again, it's a matter of the community and saying something to Ormo's question. I believe that we can, we can help the people that want to make a change, but also we can forget the people that don't know how to make a change. To comment on that, if it's all right, is uh, you know you got a 13-year-old with an ambition. Rather than saying that that's a bad thing, that kid wants to do something. I see that as a great thing that he wants to be have his father as a role model. What really needs to be taught is that he needs to wait to make that decision. 
There's plenty of welders out there making over eighty to a hundred thousand uh, dollars a year, and I've seen in the oil field companies that start out as guys that start out as welders and have four or five guys making a quarter million, half a million dollars in the oil field. There's nothing wrong. We need welders. So understanding what to do with that kid's ambition and understand that great. I want you to be a welder, but you know what? I want you to go to school. You're going to learn on the side how to do it, part-time. But you know what? You need to be able to, uh, to to educate them enough to take that and think beyond just being the worker and actually being able to teach that kid how to be the owner of the business so that he can make five times. So educating parents to say, son, you can wind up being like me, but I want you to be smarter than me. And I'll still show you what I'm doing, but I want you to make be five times better than me. Have five workers under you working too. And teach not just the kids, but reteach the parents on how to talk with their kids to be able to get them to think a little bit further. And maybe even run their parents' business too. Breaking the walls, how we have built. Yes. And that's something I agree with that because you're my dad. <laughs> I'm awesome. But, uh, but one thing also is parents alike have a responsibility. I feel that they need to have that responsibility to be able to uh, teach them that there's more than just what's here. And it's, it's good to experience things now and understand other people's points of view. Another way to do that is. It's great to be in the Rio Grande Valley, but it's also great to go out and experience other people to expand the, the ideology of the Rio Grande Valley and our culture. I'd just like to add a comment to that. I think we need to have some teachers, not early on, but the majority of people end up trying to decide their career in their high school, in their high school career and even in their college career. So I think we need to have some teachers to have some guts to say, well, let me, let me show you what, what else there is to expose, to give them a, some exposure to what's out there. Because some people are just, they have a very uh, narrow scope of what, they're, of what they're seeing in life. And it needs to be, we need to have some teachers to say, uh, say okay, well, can I show you this? And if they still don't like it, that's fine. But you know, we just need to have some exposure for the kids to show them, hey, something else other than just welding. That's great if he just wants to be a welder. He's been exposed and he's either not good good in it or doesn't have any interest in it. But we need to have emphasize exposure to the kids in their high school as well as college career. I think it's gonna take more than that. Because it seems like it's like there's an option for these kids, but what if there's not an option for these kids? Because where I work from, a lot of kids we get they come from they come from the from the pandillas. They come from I work at the Mipa. A lot of the parents that work for the cartels, or they themselves are the ones that are providing for the family. And for them, they see oh maybe a welder. Hey, maybe that's some some money can get for my family. And that's what opportunity they see. And for them, it might be hard to get out of it because they're so involved with the, with the crime in here. So that's something else that we take into consideration. We can show them more uh, other opportunities, and that's something that all teachers should be doing. Mm. But sometimes with the kids, they just see as, I need money just so I can get food on the table for my family. And these were kids that it was really difficult to 
I personally believe that in the valley there has there has, has many important people that has been doing or has the capability to do something important. But I think that we have failed uh, in the in the project plan as, uh, as uh, Chicago was mentioning. Because those people they are in Austin, they're in other places and they don't have a plan to come back. And maybe when they come back it's when their family needs them, but maybe it's too late and they have already spent the time their time doing something great for our community. So I mean it's really interesting, but that's something that you should mention that many, I have heard that many people, more people start mentioning that, but what's a plan to give them, take them back here with experience? I mean, that's a fair question. There's a problem with self-confidence in children around here. They, they're so cocooned, and being, and feeling so small because the valley or where they come from. So I think also instilling in them like a confidence or uh, that, that they are essentially a citizen of the world, that it's not, they're not that small, that there's more, and that they are significant would be something to look into. I think that's uh, something uh, is addressed by the local businesses being able to give back to the education, uh, educational programs, uh, and through ed educational through educational programs in school districts, and being able to say, you know, they shut down their business to be able to go and share with them uh, about entrepreneurship or technology, whatever the business, healthcare business, whatever the industry is, to be able to go to communities and share with them to the students and the kids that, and be able to implement that is to be able to get the community and the other people to just break down the wall, knock it down, and be able to enter that, enter the community and make an impact. It's the want and need for businesses to make an impact, not just the, to create people that will create an impact. Yeah, because keep in mind that children who really need, need the help, like she mentioned the programs that are out there, sometimes their parents can't afford to even take them somewhere. They can't even afford to take them to the library, per se. So there's more to be done about that, and maybe uh, programs that people, like the people that are here today, that they're offered free knowledge somewhere, a uh, program on their own, a visit to a library, helping them how to learn how to read, um, something like that, something that starts small, especially for the community, which is really needed because at the end of the day, these are the kids, the children, these are the people that will be looking after all of us if any other incentive there is. Um, I think that's what I'm saying is to be able for the businesses to be able to provide those services for free as charity to, to educational uh, s systems and uh, school districts to be able to connect with them, build a partnership, and sponsor events. Um, I know one event that I just participated in uh, to increase uh, STEM-related education, the U.S. Navy got involved with the Seaford Aquatic Robot here at PESCA. I competed in that, and that's offered uh, throughout and school districts sometimes don't have enough money to be able to do that, but also their local business, because businesses can help out by sponsoring the school's team to be able to provide the uh, stuff that they need and be able to buy the kit for the Sea Perch competition or any other competition, whether it be STEM related, business related, healthcare related. Okay.